Hello YouTube. I don't even know how to start this video. <laughs> I'm out here with my husband and the baby and we're like, how do we, how do we even do this? <laughs> I feel like it's, I'm just in a weird spot and I need to just update you guys. Good. Got my water, <laughs> got my stool. So the last week, really the last 24 hours has been really strange. I have been wanting to get a YouTube video out. A lot of you guys know we just had a baby. She's three and a half months old and she's amazing. <laughs> you staring at me, I love you. Mwah. How many guys do you know that can rock a ring sling? <laughs> anyway. As you can imagine, I gave myself a lot of grace in getting back into YouTube because I really just wanted to be present for her in these beginning months of life. And I just took the pressure off of myself to make YouTube videos as much as I've missed you guys. And now that I'm here and I can make YouTube videos again and my body's feeling good and she's doing great and we've got a little bit of a rhythm now going and we're sleeping better at night. It's like, okay, let's start YouTube again, but what to make a video about? Uh, a couple of my videos are doing really well. Uh, the start a farm in your backyard video is doing really well. Um, how to start a worm farm is doing really well and how to build a mobile greenhouse is also doing really well. So it's like, you know, as a YouTuber, you kind of think, oh, should I make a video on one of those topics? But what to talk about regarding those topics? And I have like a thousand and one other projects happening at the moment. So I, I don't know what I'm doing, but there is one thing that I hold on to when I don't know what else to do. Uh, but first, let me just tell you a little bit about what is going on right now. So right now we are in the process of installing drip line that I bought a year ago. Yeah, I bought it and then I got too pregnant to really care about it. And I told myself eventually I'll get to it, even though I knew it was just going to be exponentially harder. And it has been <laughs> with a newborn. I just was like, I can't do this right now. It was just too much for my pregnant body. And I really wanted to make a video of me doing it, at least of us doing it and not just have it be something that goes, you know, unfilmed. Like, and that is something as a YouTuber that is hard because there are things that you sometimes just need to get done, but you're like, do I film this? How do I film it? Anyway, that's one thing that we're doing finally is working on this drip line. And we have encountered so many problems basically because I bought the wrong tubing. Let me just share with you a little bit behind the scenes of installing new drip line looks like. So this is my backyard right now. <laughs> it's just like, so here it is. <laughs> so I got about this far and realized that I bought the wrong tubing. Um, I needed to buy half inch. I bought three quarter inch thinking that it's fine. No, it's not. <laughs> I needed a half inch. So, the project is at a, is that, so the project is currently at a standstill. And then there's the garden, which is also just at this like weird in-between phase, which theoretically it should be in like full production mode right now. Like so many other people in the South uh, have going for them right now, especially me in San Diego, Southern California. Uh, but you know, it's in this awkward in-between stage because all of my plant starts died. Welcome to the mobile greenhouse where this year I started a bunch of plants and then they all died. So there's that. <laughs> like it's just been so strange. I've never had that happen. Technically this is my fourth season gardening, but I don't know. I'm still consider myself a very beginning gardener. And last year I had such great success with plants, but then COVID hit and I wasn't able to sell them. So I was like, this year's my year. And then all my plants died. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Stop being so weird. Stop. <laughs> Why? Stop being so weird. Why? Stop. Flirty. <laughs> Uh-oh, Ruby. Okay, back to what I was saying. This is the mobile greenhouse, and a lot of you guys watched me build it, and you think it's pretty cool, and I'm so flattered by that. Thank you so much. I think it's pretty cool, too, and a lot of you guys have asked for plans, and so 
Mr. Thomas the engineer. My sunshine is going to make these in computer animated design. That's what CAD is, right? No. What's CAD? Computer aided drafting. <laughs> Tommy is going to make a computer aided draft of this. Did I say that right? Uh, just say CAD. CAD. Just cut, cut the whole thing out. He's gonna make a cat of this, and he says that I should cut all of my mistakes out. Just cut the whole thing out. Just cut the whole thing out. Yeah. Just cut the whole thing out. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Tommy's gonna make a cat of this, and we will have it up for you guys, available on the website very soon. All right, but back to what I was saying about all of my plant starts dying. Uh, they all died, and it was kind of my mistake because I trusted the guy at the nursery. He told me, oh yeah, the soil's so great, and they didn't have what I wanted. What I love is Fox Farms Ocean Forest Mix, or Happy Frogs Mix that comes in the brown bag. Anyway, either one of those are really great mixes if you're going to buy something to start your seeds in. Um, I also have really enjoyed making my own mix, but I don't have like my formula completely down for that yet. So anyway, with the baby and everything, I just thought I'm just going to buy potting soil. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, do I have the ingredients to make it my own at home? Yes, but it's just like way more work than I have time for at the moment. So I bought the potting mix. Anyway, long story short, I bought the wrong mix. I, I should have looked for another mix elsewhere, but again, you know, you have a baby, you're at the nursery, you're like, this is my chance, I need to buy my soil. So I like bought the soil, thought it was great, planted so much stuff in it. I even repotted like my house plants in this stuff and literally the soil just wreaked havoc on everything that it touched. And what I've come to find out is that soil was likely not ready for sale. Uh, I guess due to COVID, a lot of things kind of got messed up with the whole soil production, composting thing. So I'm not sure if it's too hot or if it just doesn't have the right minerals or what. It would be interesting to do like a CP, CPK test? C CP, California Pizza Kitchen? <laughs> what is it called? Nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, all of that stuff. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to do a soil test on it and see what it has or doesn't have or what it's lacking or not lacking. Um, long story short, I shouldn't have bought that mix and it killed a lot of stuff. So there's that. Then the last couple days, it's been really hot. It's been really windy. And I feel like I'm on wildlife overload. If you follow me on Instagram at all, you know that yesterday we found a baby bird at the base of a tree and we didn't know what to do. We entertained the idea of taking care of it and <laughs> rehabbing it back to health, but it turns out that baby birds have to eat every 15 minutes. We kind of looked at each other like, eh, we already have our own baby bird to feed <laughs> quite enough and take care of. So we decided to call the professionals and we took the bird in to a local aviary rescue, avian rescue um, type situation. Tiny Tim, <laughs> we hope he made it. We hope he pulled through. <laughs> It's called the San Diego Humane Society, Tommy just told me. So if you live in the area, it's in the farthest part of North County, San Diego, and uh, they take in wildlife like that. Then today, <laughs> Oliver decides to catch a little blur a little bird, and these things are actually called fledglings. So he got a fledgling. It's like, it has its feathers, but it's not quite ready to fly yet, and we just thought, what the heck? like. Oliver, that's not even fair, like hunt something that's full size. But what we came to find out was the same thing had happened that some fledglings had fallen from the tree and had taken up uh, residence in our bushes in the yard. It turns out that baby birds were interested in taking up residence in this bush. And uh, it also turns out that that's like a thing, like if they either get booted from the nest or don't make it upon their first flight that they will do their best to find cover below the tree that they hatched in or had their nest in and the parents will oh, still tend him. you did yeah he's over here oh my gosh literally as i'm telling you guys that the birds will tend to their young outside of the nest if they don't make it tommy just found the fledgling okay so Oliver found a fledgling and unfortunately that fledgling was in too much of shock and he did not make it. But then we came out and found another one and now that bird is out here. Oh, buddy, so cute. 
back to what I was saying is if you find a baby fledgling, which apparently is very common this time of year, the rule of thumb is according to our local Humane Society and many of you who uh, reached out to me on Instagram, thank you so much, uh, is to not do anything and let nature take its course and trust that the parents are going to tend to that baby bird. There is a reason that it got either kicked from the nest or didn't make its first flight, whatever it may be. And you really don't want to interfere with nature. Nature really knows what's up. Uh, nature knows how to take care of itself. But let's say you do have predators in the area like us with our cats who love the backyard. Uh, we're not going to be letting them in the backyard. That's one way that will be kind of helping the natural progression of these baby fledglings life. Uh, if you know for sure that you can't kind of protect it the way we can by like keeping the cats out, you can create like a faux nest and set it somewhere safe and the parents should tend to it. Um, that's what we've witnessed so far today at least and you can hear them communicating right now. So yeah, anyway, just some tips for you if you're dealing with any baby fledglings in your area. You definitely don't want to interfere, but if you know that it would benefit them due to predators, um, you can just try to handle them as minimally as possible and obviously not with bare hands and put them somewhere safe. Uh, the parents should tend to them. We're working on drip line. The garden is in transition. We're rescuing baby birds. There's worm castings that need to be harvested. We're rescuing plants. It just feels like there is so much. Oh yeah, and by the way, we're keeping a little tiny human alive too. <laughs> so, all that to say, there is a lot happening right now in our lives. We're keeping this human alive. We're installing a new drip line. The garden is in transition. We're growing new plants. We're helping baby birds hopefully make it to their first flight. And obviously there's a giant worm farm that needs harvesting. And it just feels like, I don't know what to talk to you guys about. You know, I have these videos that are doing well, but I know a lot of you guys want updates on our life. And it's definitely hard as a YouTuber when you take a little break, like how do I hop back into things? What's, you know, the algorithm going to favor? What's my true audience going to like? And I don't really know how to hop back into things, but I want you guys to know that we're here and <laughs> we have a lot going on behind the scenes as far as just maintaining the homestead, hopefully having plants to grow here, hopefully having a drip line that is going to keep everything super healthy and uh, keep developing our little ecosystem to support our local birds and keep building our worm farm, which is ready for harvest and expansion here. So anyway, if there's something in particular that you guys want to see, please do let me know. We are documenting all of this and eventually we'll have some videos out for you very soon on like a very straightforward video on how to install drift line and a very straightforward video on how to harvest worm castings. Uh, that's really what I enjoy creating for you guys is like very straightforward videos on how to do these things that were once very intimidating to me and then hopefully you know I figure out how to do how to do them so that we can share them with you uh, and like I said the CAD designs for this greenhouse will be available very soon there is one thing though that I hold on to in the midst of all the chaos of like many different projects being started and learning sometimes as we go and that is treat things like a math problem <laughs> If you don't know how to do something completely, at least take a step towards it and try and eliminate all of the parts that you do know how to do so that eventually you have enough kind of momentum or know-how or even just confidence to do it to complete the project. Um, that's what I had to tell myself this week in starting the drip line is like, listen, Natalie, just lay out the pieces that you can figure out, overcome your fear. You probably are gonna make some mistakes. It's okay. Like just treat it like a math problem. Do the parts that you can do and enlist help. Like Tommy came out, he helped me. We're figuring it out together and uh, you know, ultimately I just need to buy other tubing and then it will probably be a rather seamless project. So I'm really glad that I treated it like a math problem and just did the parts that I figured out I knew how to do and the more complicated parts, which ended up just being needing to get new tubing, you know, become a little easier because I took those steps, got some momentum, felt more courageous and felt like, okay, I can do this. And so that's my encouragement to you. And that's what my mom taught me how to do is treat it like a math problem. Do the parts that you know how to do and then everything else will slowly but surely start to fall into place. And that's what I'm telling myself when it comes to YouTube too, is I could stay off YouTube missing you guys being like, well, I don't know what to make a video about. I don't know what they want to see. And I could just not make a video and just stay stuck there. Or I could say, hey, I'm going to treat this like a math problem too and just 
let you guys know where I'm at. I'm still here, I'm alive. I just feel a little stuck on like, how do I hop back into things? What is it that you guys really wanna see? And just in doing that and sharing with you guys where I'm at, that I'm alive, that we have projects going on here and that I am really excited to share with you our different plans that will be available very soon uh, and different videos that will also be available really soon. I feel like, okay, we're shaking off a little bit of the rest. We're getting some positive momentum and that is a really powerful thing. I don't know how much you guys can hear the birds, but they are very much active and swooping down and looking for these baby fledglings. And it gives me the impression that there might be more than one. So maybe there were like a lot of nests in our tree this year. I'm not really sure, but I definitely feel the pressure to get out of their zone and let them do their thing. Oh yeah, also the wheelbarrow broke and the seeds that I was saving got rained on. So it's been a weird week. <laughs> Anyway, so there's a little update on us. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And yeah, very much still here, very much still wanna be a YouTuber and share with you guys our adventures in modern homesteading. Uh, just shaking off the rust a little bit as we get back into it. And, and that's okay. I'm glad to be shaking off the, off the rust and still doing this rather than just throwing in the towel. There's no way I'm gonna throw in the towel. There's just still way too much adventure to share with you guys. And we have so many cool projects that I'm really excited to share with you here very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, I know that these little fledglings could really use your prayers and good vibes. So please pray that they make it. Please send all the good vibes. Uh, if you have any tips on what we can do to support them or not do to support them, definitely let us know. We're really not used to this whole like fledglings in the garden thing. So uh, really appreciate you guys for just being here and joining us on this journey. And uh, yeah. Here's to many more videos and much more adventure together. Don't forget that if you feel like your life is full of obstacles or you don't know which way to go, you can always count on my mama's advice, which is treat it like a math problem. Just do the parts that you can do and the rest will fall into place. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.